All right, Algebra 1B students, welcome to part 2 of Lesson 12.5. We're going to continue talking about uh, not only types of data, but types of statistical analysis that we can do. Um, a little bit more vocabulary for you in this uh, video. We're going to talk uh, about different types of sampling methods, different ways that we can gather information from people. Okay, The first thing we have to understand is that when we collect information about a group of objects or people, we are trying to get information about what is called a population. They were trying to get um, information about an entire population. That population uh, includes maybe all men, or maybe all human beings, or maybe all American people, or maybe all you know, pieces of paper or all, all of, of any specific uh, object or group of people. Okay, that's called a population, the entire group that we're trying to get information about. Now, when a population is too large to survey or gather information from, we survey or gather information from a part of that population to find characteristics of the whole. That survey or, or the part of the population that is surveyed, excuse me, is called the sample. So there's a very key difference between a sample and a population. A sample is always a part of a population. A sample is always a part of a population. Here's a Venn diagram to illustrate it if it helps. The sample is within the population. Okay? A sample is always a part of the population. It's just a smaller group because that's what's possible. right? It's not possible for us to go to every American person and ask them how tall they are. But we can take a small sample of American people and figure out how tall they are. Okay? Now, three sampling methods are, are, are shown below. I'm going to show you these three sampling methods. Um, when you design a survey, you should choose a sample that reflects the population. Now, all of these can be good um, sampling methods, but we'll talk about maybe why one is the best uh, out of all of them. Okay? Or, or in what situations maybe each one is best. Now, the three sampling methods that we're going to talk about are random, systematic, and stratified. <clears throat> okay? A random sample is exactly what it sounds like. It means you take a population and you randomly grab 50 people in the town of Birchwood. Okay? Uh, you, you put everybody's name in a hat, for example. You draw out 50 names, and those are the people in your survey. Wherever they live doesn't matter. How old they are doesn't matter. And nothing matters except that they are a part of the town of Birchwood or the population that you want. That's called a random sample. Okay. The next type of sampling method is called a systematic sample. A systematic sampling method um, basically takes every uh, tenth person or every fifth person or every seventh person or whatever. So you get a list, maybe an alphabetical list of all the students in Birchwood High School. And you go around and you survey or you sample every third person on your list. So you skip the first two, you go to the third person. Skip the next two, you go to that next person, survey them. Skip the next two and then survey that third person. Skip the next two, survey that third person. Okay, That's called a systematic sample because it's just very regimented. Okay? Uh, the important part, though, is that whatever number you select is somewhat random or not necessarily random, but is not chosen for any particular purpose. Like you can't look at a list and then decide, oh, I want to make sure I survey this person and this person and this person, so I'm going to pick every four people or whatever so that I get those people. You have to either pick a number at random and pick every you know one of those numbers, or you have to do it in a way that, that sort of tells you how many people do you want to survey. I've got 100 people, I want to survey 50, so I'll sample every other person, every second person. Okay? So that's a systematic sampling method where you just pick every fourth person or every twelfth person or every hundredth person or whatever. The third type of sampling method is called stratified samples. And a stratified sample separates a population of people into different categories, each of which have a certain characteristic. Okay? So uh, like the example here, separate a high school into four groups by grade level. 
right? Maybe we want to randomly pick uh, 20 people from the Birchwood High School, but we don't want all of them to be seniors. We don't want all of them to be freshmen or all of them to be whatever age because we think maybe there's some difference in the ages. So we pick randomly five seniors. We pick randomly five juniors, five sophomores, five freshmen, and that makes a stratified sample because we grouped the population uh, along a certain characteristic. Okay? Um, you can also do that if you think men and women are going to have different answers or different uh, responses to your survey. You can sample men separately from women and combine them to make this stratified sample where you've just separated your population into two other groups with a certain characteristic. Okay? So we have random samples where everything's just totally random. We have systematic samples where we pick every fourth person or every eighth person or whatever. Uh, and we, we have stratified samples where we pick uh, a random sample from different groups within a population because of a certain characteristic. Now, um, the first part of your practice problem set is going to be about deciding what type of sample these are and if they were good samples or not. So we'll talk a little bit more about what good samples mean uh, here. <clears throat> but it's all about what you want to find out. What information do you want? Okay. So here's a problem about DVD rentals. You want to find out how many DVD students at your school rent in a month. You interview every 10th teenager you see at a mall. What sampling method are you using? Is this a good sampling method? Now, I think the key that we can all pick up on is this. This phrase right here. Every tenth teenager should tell you what type of sample this is. This is a systematic sampling method. Okay? This is a systematic sampling method because we, we did every tenth teenager uh, at a mall. Okay? Now, is this a good sample? I don't see why not because um, you know as long as you think the mall is a generally you know kind of random place where people are hanging out everybody hangs out there um, then you know that's probably fine. So there's maybe not a right or wrong answer here but we just say this is probably a fine sampling method for this case. Um, there's no reason to believe any different, I don't think. Now, there is a reason to believe something different. If we were to say we interview every 10th teenager, not at the mall, but at the video store, right? We interview every 10th teenager that we see at the video store because we're trying to find information about all the kids at my school, right? So it doesn't make any sense to go to the place where kids are getting DVDs to sample them about how many DVDs they get because you're only going to get the people that like watching movies, right? So if we were to do this interview at a movie store or outside of a movie theater, we probably have an issue with our sampling method um, because, you know, we think we're going to get some information that's probably not accurate. It's not uh, reliable for us. But doing it at a mall seems totally fine to me, okay? So part of your homework is going to be to kind of do some thinking and decide well, not only what kind of sampling method is this, but is it an okay sample? Is it okay that I did this? Do I think I'm going to get some good results from my sample? Okay, Because when we don't get good results from a sample, we run into something in statistics which is called bias. Okay, And bias a lot of times shows up in survey questions, the questions that you are asking people. And a survey question has bias when it contains assumptions that may or may not be true or when it influences opinions and can make one answer seem better than another. Survey questions have to be very carefully worded to avoid bias. Here's a very egregious example. Okay? A reporter wants to find out what kind of movies are most popular with local residents. The reporter asks this survey question to a random sample of people. Do you prefer exciting action movies or boring documentaries? And then they ask, is this question biased? Well, the answer is, of course, yes. Of course, this question is biased because of this word right here and this word right here. 
right? Because in the question that he's asking, this reporter is saying action movies are exciting, documentaries are boring. One of those is a positive adjective, the other is a negative adjective. So yes, there's bias here because it may influence people to answer, answer I should say, to answer action movies. And we don't want to influence people to answer any specific um, thing, right? We don't want to influence the way people are answering our survey questions. So to ask a question that leads people to say a certain thing uh, is probably going to be an issue and probably going to lead to bias in our sample, okay? So if you have questions about sampling methods, what are good, what are bad, or, or when we might see bias in, in a question, please make a note to ask me in class tomorrow. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. Have a wonderful night.